Hi, session five of scripture interpretation. Today I want to go into, I want to follow up from uh, session four. Uh, I'm sure you learned something new there, something uh, phenomenal actually, uh, which has been hidden uh, for, for maybe 2,000 years, who knows. Uh, how we've interpreted the, the garden in Genesis. Now to review what we taught last time, that is symbolic language there in the garden uh, with Adam and Eve. It's actually teaching us how to, uh, how to go into the word of God. Remember the garden is the word of God. It is the Bible, it is scripture, I think I've made my point. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil that Adam and Eve were told, don't eat of that tree, surely you'll die. And that we know is the law. It's in the garden. It's in the scriptures. It's in the Old Testament. And if we're not careful, we can... Uh, we can think it's in the New Testament also, if we're not careful. Remember, we're always to go to the tree of life, which is the gospel, the good news. And I gave you the good news. God saved the whole world before the foundation of the world. There's no more sin. It was done at the cross. Jesus Christ, his last three words were, it is finished. Sin was finished. But it was not finished in the Christian Babylonian church. So um, today I want to go into two sections of scripture that the, uh, the Babylonian church has totally misunderstood and uh, because they're not careful in how to interpret scripture, uh, they're either not careful or deceitful, one or the other. And uh, could be both, who knows, but whatever. They've been absolutely... <laughs> uh, uh, corrupted this part of scripture again. Oh. And we're going to go to two sections in the Old Testament, in Isaiah 14 and in Ezekiel 28, where the, the Christian Babylonian church has uh, told us this talks about the devil, Lucifer, Satan, or whoever you want to uh, call it there. They, they make it some magical spirit out there, uh, that he's in everybody's head, or or he's in uh, he's in uh, somewhere around you, or whatever. But he's invisible. Well, uh, you're you're gonna find out today what what Lucifer really is. And so I want to start in uh, in Isaiah fourteen twelve. Excuse me, I'm I'm looking at scripture here on my other computer. Isaiah 14, 12 says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? Now they identify this as Satan. But I'm going to show you who Satan really is. Uh, How art thou cut down to the ground which did weaken the nations? How did the nations get weakened? by the teaching, false teaching, of the Christian Babylonian church. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt thee, excuse me, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, I will sit also upon the, upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north sitting in the congregation. Who's he talking about? Well, we're going to find out. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. Remember what, 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 uh, what they said in Genesis there, you'll, you'll know uh, good and evil, you'll be like God. So uh, this is what he's talking about here. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, I will be like the Most High. Wow, like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. They that see thee 
shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, listen to me very carefully here, is this the man? Here we identify Lucifer as a man. And I say that man is your preacher who's preaching a false gospel in the Christian Babylonian church. Is this the man that made the earth tremble to tremble, that did shake kingdoms? Wow, they're wondering, uh, well, is this the guy we were worried about? This is Satan? Yeah. The, the children of the devil, Lucifer, Satan, whatever you want to call it, is in every pulpit in the Christian church. There you have Satan. Satan is not some magical thing out there. He does his work right in the Christian church. That's where he works. That made the world as a wilderness. Yes, the Christian church has made the world a wilderness. Okay, and I'm going to finish there for Isaiah chapter 14. Now I'm going to go to Ezekiel chapter 28 where the church uses this as Satan also. Let me get my Bible here, and we'll get right to it. Uh, they, uh, I'll start in verse 2. Son of man, say on to the prince of Tyrus. Now, prince means leader, leader of the Christian church, actually, in your church, elder, whatever, preacher, pastor, whatever you want to call it. Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus, Thus saith the Lord God, Because thine heart is lifted up, because you've gone to the law, and you're using the law to destroy the people, because thine heart is lifted up, and thou hast said, I am as God. I sit in the seat of God, in the midst of the seat, yet thou art a man. Now the church uses this as, as saying that the prince of Tyrus is, uh, is the devil, is Satan himself. Well, we know who the devil is. We know who Satan is. We know who Lucifer is. He's in your pulpit. That's where he is. That's where he does his best work. That's where he likes to be. <clears throat> it looks good up there. That church looks good with that parking, beautiful parking lot, beautiful building, pristine, Looks good, but is dead men's bones. Thou art a man and not God. Though thy, thou set thine heart as the heart of God. They've made themselves God there in those pulpits, destroying the people, pounding poison into them, making them feel guilty by taking them to the law, to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now you know where, where, who Prince Tyrus is. He's just a man. He's a preacher. That's who the devil is. That's who Satan is. That's who children of the devil are. They, that's who, uh, hey, Jesus called them snakes. So I wanted to, to, to bring those two points to you about Scripture <clears throat> and how they just use Scripture to destroy. They have, because they, they uh, whether they've uh, been deceived and uh, they've just swallowed the poison down the line here, doesn't matter. They, they do not have an understanding of Scripture because they miss this. Thou art a man. They say it's some kind of uh, spirit out there. No, it's just a man. It's just your preacher. It's just your pastor. That's who it is. So I'm going to conclude this uh, session five uh, of, of the scripture interpretation here as, uh, as uh, we go on here. So looking for session six. Thank you.